I never realized that that was uh, that really was the connection. Your audience and I really had a deep connection through um, COVID. So, yeah, you and just regular conversation, you're like, yeah, you know, when I used to live with Johnny Cash, we got to stop the breaks right here. What do you mean you you lived with Johnny Cash? Jim Brewer. 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 Dude. How you been? Doing good, man. Doing real good. So once you I we're signed up to go diving. Yep. That's ex, that's exciting. I'm gonna bring you on a dive. Do you know where you're gonna be diving? Um, there's um dude, I was actually scoping this place out and I'm i I'm so excited that we're doing a dive there. Devil's Den. Oh, yeah, like springs. It's a spring. Oh yeah! No way yeah, I'm dying to do that. Yeah. I didn't know that. All right, I thought you were like, okay. All right, you're lucky, man. I'm pumped, man. I'm so excited. Good, good, good. Um, so we got a couple guests today. I almost wanted to do two shows because I got a lot to talk about. First of all, Sarasota, September sixteenth. There's a show in Sarasota. I will be there September 16th. Just open up and get 200 seats left. 200 seats now available for Sarasota. This is going to be incredible. Uh, go on jimbrew.com. Get your tickets for the Sarasota show. There's also a bunch of other shows like through the Ohio area. So... Um, Pretty close to that. Now, I'm a little misorganized today there. I thought I had this. I thought I said, oh, so we did, I was in New York City, and we did a show. It was called Ride the Laughter. And it was really good. It was, when I tell you pulled out of my ass, I mean pulled out of my ass. Now, before we even get into this, um, one show, I literally just, I didn't even announce it. We we put it out there yesterday, one day ago, and the first, it's, it's almost sold out. It's possible, but it's, it's almost sold out. We're, so let's call Joel, who books uh, Soul Joe. Well, there he is. So he's already there. What's up, brother? How you doing? Wow, where are you, where are you at? Uh, um, this is uh, this is my studio in my in my new place where you're gonna come uh, in in November. It's a spe it's a speakeasy. Oh, are you serious? Oh yeah. <laughs> where is the speakeasy? Like, where is that part of the? It the yeah, it, it's it's part of the restaurant that we just opened up in June, and uh, it's right off that. This is gonna be the green room uh, when you're here. Ah, I tell you what, I may, you may be my second favorite place after the Paramount, which I just played too, which is. So those of you here, so I'm at the Paramount in Long Island, November 3rd. Those tickets are already on sale. Joe's like, hey, man, come here November 2nd. I went, all right, but don't, like, let's not, let's not go crazy. Let's just put it on and we'll, you know, Atlantic City will start to, boom, it's already, we're blowing it out. It's like that, man. Well, what happened was last time you were here, you, no one sold more tickets and did more shows over the pandemic than you did. You really right. gave the people of Pennsylvania a voice. And, like, it really uh, gave the laughter, was healing, and it was a symbol of hope. All your shows. And, and people come up to me countless times, and they can't thank me enough for bringing you here. And I, I went to this place because uh, I'm on my feet a lot, working hard. I went, I went to this place near my house. And this guy was talking to me. I, I just bought the wrong shoes. I'm on my feet all day. And the guy goes, you're a young guy. What are you doing? And I go, oh, well, I, I just took over this uh, this historic venue. And I have a comedy club. He goes, wait a second. He goes, are you Soul Joel? And I go, yeah. He goes, oh, Jim Brewer was just there. He broke one of your microphones. <laughs> <laughs> he, he went from not recognizing me to knowing exactly what I've been up to in two minutes. 
Dude, yeah, because I put that on the internet too. I think I put that. So, yeah, for people that don't know, it was during the pandemic. You, you're like, hey, I got outside space. I went to the outside space. It was like, you, I played Vinnie Brand's place, a little tiny place. And you're like, yep. hey, I got outside. We went outside. I could not believe how many people showed up. Yep. And then we just kept doing it and just kept doing it. And then you got, then you got even, then you got like that hanger looking thing yeah. in this field outside the building. You were able to go, all right, I'm not allowed to, what about this space here? Oh, I could use it. Oh, great. I'm going to keep my business going. And I'm telling all my listeners, I'm being dead honest with you, dead honest with you. Every time I've played Soul Joe's, it I'm telling you, I've never improved. Well, it's ma it's magical. I don't even know yeah. how to explain it. I don't even yeah. know how to explain it. And now, I, you know, I use a couple of the same things, like you building the stage or whatever. But it's one of the only places where I've had. I I honestly feel like I'm hanging out with everyone at my family get together where yeah. we haven't seen each other in a while. Right. And I've heard, I'm already two beers in and we're just hanging. And it really is. I, I love that place. So I'm glad I'm going to be there November 2nd, right? November 2nd. Yep. And, and then, and, and just announced November 1st. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? Jim, you, you, you forced my hand. I added another show. What are we going to do? I haven't even put these on the internet yet. <laughs> I haven't even. All right. So, <laughs> so how how do people get tickets for that? Then they got to go to souljoles, souljoles dot com. Okay, so here's what we do. <laughs> oh, I mean, sorry, we're in I, August. I improv that. Yeah, we're in we're in we're in August. So <laughs> I'll put in like two three in a couple of weeks. I'll put up like September first. I'll put up on jimbury dot com that they can get both shows and then oh my gosh it'd be amazing if they both sold out and we're confident to add a tuesday that'd be sick yeah. too i don't think that's before gonna happen put it on your website what before we even put it on your website before we even put it that'd be pretty sick so yeah it's i never realized <laughs> i never realized that that was uh that really was the connection your audience and I really had a deep connection through um, COVID. So I guess that makes sense why why they keep coming back. So, all right, yeah. man, I'll see you November. Who's coming? Anyone good coming you want to talk about? Soul yeah, Joe's? yeah. I, I got uh, Dave Attell coming up next I week. And we're in the middle of Summerfest. That was okay. the first time that you were there. I did 16 straight days uh, of comedy in a row, one day for every week that I lost during the shutdown. Yeah. And it got voted the best uh, outdoor event for the summer three years in a row. So now this is our fourth time. Uh, and I got Jimmy Dore coming. And, um, oh, it, I love Jimmy Dore. Yeah, he, he's great, man. Uh, so those are the two guys that are coming up. Bonnie McFarlane, um, Jackie uh, Martling is uh, is coming for the first okay. time. So All right. Uh, yeah, a couple, couple of exciting shows, but I, everyone's looking forward to you. Good. I'll see you soon, Joel. Have a good one. Yeah, can't wait. Later, Gator. Soul Joel. Um, yeah, I haven't even we were texting and then he goes like, dude, we sold over 500 tickets already. I'm like, what? It's what? I, I'm telling you. I don't know what it is about that venue. I go, it's it, it it's like playing the Paramount New York in Huntington, but a totally different it's it's Anyway, I'm not exaggerating. It's going to be incredible. So that's going to be some weekend. So I mean, Soul Joel's on a Thursday, the Paramount on a Friday. I'm trying to find something for that Saturday. And now it's going to be Wednesday, Thursday, Soul Joel's. And then Friday, Huntington. And then Saturday, I'm looking to maybe we can get a, I don't know, get like a Pennsylvania gig or something. So those are the big shows those shows and sarasota florida uh we also have dunedin florida which palm harbor that's gonna be a fun gig and some other ones all right yeah i wanted to get into this whole 
I, I think I'll save it for another whole show, but it's, oh, dude, Shaka crushed it. He crushed it. Did he? Jimmy, Jimmy Shaka opened up the Paramount. He crushed it. So I go, I go up there to see Shock at one point. I don't really watch whoever's going. I'll, I'll take a quick peek. So Shaka, you know, he's totally relaxed because he's been performing for 30 years. 30 years Jimmy shocker has been performing. Um, so he goes up and he's, and I hear, now there was a, there was a wedding in their, in their private, um, place downstairs but it's really well padded and so i didn't know if it was the crowd from the wedding or jimmy getting the crowd involved at the paramount and i go up the stairs and i'm like what's going on and i hear shaka just like he was singing piano man had the whole place singing had the whole place singing and right before that he had a tom petty song he was doing and the whole he had everyone singing it it blew my freaking mind but it really started out my doors going i would my brain shock on the road if he was up for doing road gigs I, I it was we have video um did you get the video yet mike or no no i haven't okay so we have video of me doing the rock show uh it's sort of it's a one-man show it's not a band thing it's a one-man show i'm gonna put that in patreon you can join my patreon page you can just join for a month and then dump it the following month but i mean so we're gonna have probably one or two concerts on there so we'll put the the rock show we did the gramercy put it on the patreon and we'll do the um the paramount show that i just did that just i was nervous i haven't done stand up in over two and a half three months at least and you know i don't, I don't have a, a small comedy club to work out stuff so i just jumped on stage at the paramount and i talked about hawaii the hilton with dni uh we we went far and wide and it was it was awesome uh i talked about this new thing about hunting and all that and it was it was uh it was a good show so we're gonna get you footage of shaka and we're gonna get you footage of uh both those concerts now i want to introduce a friend of mine all right when i came down to florida this we met during we met during the hurricane not during the hurricane but his fiance i believe at the time reached out and i wanted to do a um a benefit and i was calling my agent I'm like hey man can we get benefit for hurricane ian that just completely wiped out southwest florida and you know everyone you know, unless you live here no one really that's just the way it is if your community don't pick up nobody picks up so i get this like through instagram this message and it's like, hey we're doing a benefit at hertz arena would you mc it i'm like oh my god yes I'm like I'm, I'm like i don't need money let's do this and i started to get to know this guy more and more great laughs with him like does totally sober he's got crazy stories when he wasn't sober um and just a cool guy and i'll bring him on here he's a writer musician songwriter uh and just a cool guy i just know him as ira dean what you what in the dog's ass is going on brewer where where, where are you i'm in my house in nashville what, what, how big is this house is this like country star big or it's not it's it's not like luke combs big but it's decent i mean i've okay. i've done well i've done well a couple of things what are you doing in out there right now are you recording are you like producing in, what are you doing in nashville i just got done producing aaron lewis's new album i'm working on my new record um i just 
finishing a new record with um, Vince Gill. I got Vince Gill on it, Ronnie Dunn from Brooks and Dunn, John Osborne from Brother Osborne, Gary Allen. Um, I've got uh, Steve Ferroni from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers on there with me. It's just me and a bunch of great friends making a great album and um, getting one more shot at it, you know? I, so I'm like I'm like a musical cicada. Every seven years, I come out and have a hit. <laughs> so this is this is what I want people to know, though. Too there's, I, I think your story is so freaking fascinating. So you, yeah, you and just regular conversation. You're like, yeah, you know, when I used to live with Johnny Cash, and I kind of let it slide the first time you said it. And you're like, yeah, you know, when I was, when I, when me and Johnny Cash, I'm like, he didn't say, he clearly needs a son or something like that. I don't, I don't know what he's talking about. And then again, you'd be like, yeah, you know, when I was living there, and I, you know, he gave me the best advice. I'm like, whoa, whoa, wow. I gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta stop the brakes right here. What do you mean you, you lived? With Johnny Cash. And then you told the story. And I just, I think this is, I, now, you know, I love Johnny Cash. Like now, you know, I mean, I tore, I wear a shirt, his whole, I did a documentary with my father where a lot of it was based around, or just huge parts about art, the, the base of our whole family, how much we, Johnny Cash means to our life and connects us and blah, blah, blah. Uh, he was my first concert as a kid, Westbury Music Fair in Westbury, New York, when I was like nine years old. It's the first time I heard my father go, yee-haw! And I'm like, what the, f whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, Long Island, Dad, Long Island. What, 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 it's no, it's no yee-haws in Long Island. He's like, oh, I grew up in Kentucky. Like, what, Two, what is going, who, who am I right now? And that was the beginning of of it all. But I want to hear your journey of how so one, even to the point where you get married. What you told me. I mean, are we allowed to talk about that? Yeah, you can talk about it. Yeah, like you yeah. had how, how do you, tell this journey where even Johnny's son is gonna marry you. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, so you got to go back. I mean, I was a maintenance man in North Carolina on the beach at the Elizabethan Hotel. It's a long yeah. time ago. And yeah. I got electrocuted. I was a maintenance man. I got electrocuted and realized I was a shitty maintenance man. And so <laughs> I wanted to come. What do you, what do you mean so, get electrocuted? What are you doing? Are you sober? Like, what are you doing? How do I, you, what, are you I was, sticking I was, things in the socket? What are you doing, Ira? I was working on a water line, and they had the power line grounded to the water line. And I was laying in a like a the house was underneath the house was flooded underneath the hotel. And so I was covered in water Well, the, the main line, the electric line was in the water and it was cracked and I was laying in it. And as soon as, and it was grounded to the water line. So as soon as I touched wrenches to the water line, I got knocked out. And so they drug me out and um, I took like a week off work and I went to my brother. We were living in, he was living, I was living at the hotel. He was living at a trailer park. And I said, I'm moving to New York or LA. And he said, how about Nashville? And we're, I'm like, cool. And so 1990. <laughs> it, was, it was easy to persuade. We should go to New York. Or what do you think? Well, what about Nashville? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, that's it. There. Let's go to Oakland. We have, we're in. Wherever you want to go. All right. After, after we rented the, uh, the, win of the, the rental truck, we had to leave, he had to leave like his fish tank in the front yard and all the shit. We, we didn't have no money. We had, three, <laughs> we had 300 bucks. And okay. so we came to Nashville. And I was it sounds like, no offense, but this sounds like an incredible opening of a hilarious and incredible movie. I'm, 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 already, I'm eating the popcorn. I've already watched the CD. Like, true, ele <laughs> this, this is like every Jim Carrey, Adam Sandler. It's just great. Go ahead. Continue. So I moved to town. We moved yourself. to Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And I was playing music out there on weekends, but I get electrocuted. I come to Nashville and I was paying uh, 200 bucks a month for a couch and I was playing this little club called the Bell Cove Club for 30 bucks a night and all the beer I could drink which was awesome because I was still underage and so I was getting ready to after a while I was getting ready to go back home and beg for my job back back in North Carolina and this kid came in the club he had long red hair I didn't know who he was and he's like 
man, what's your story? And I was like, man, I can't afford this town. You can keep this town. And he's like, man, if it'll help out, you can stay at my house for free. I got, you'll have your own bedroom. You have your own garage. And I was like, I was driving a Chevette with no floorboard in it at the time. <laughs> it's like, I don't, Fred Flintstone style. Yeah. I was like, I don't need no, no, uh, garage. And he goes, man, I live on the lake. And I was like, sure, man. I'll, are you serious? He's like, yeah, you can live here for free. And I said, sure. And then like, well, let me go home and ask my parents. And I was like, what? And, um, so he goes home and talks to his parents, I guess. And they came in to see, I guess, who was going to be staying at the house for a while. And it happened to be Johnny Cash and June Carter. And so I ended up now, paying two hundred. Now, 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 when they come walking up, you have no clue. No. You have no clue. This is so. Are you a fan I, at this point? Or are you, dude, or I, you pissed, just... I, I pissed a quarter spot in my pants. I had no idea, you know. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I was a huge fan. Are you kidding? Who's not a fan? And John became like my adopted dad. I mean, he was pitching my songs to, uh, I remember Alan Jackson was hot at the time then. And he was taking all, and I look back, my songs were so shitty, but he was calling Alan Jackson himself going, I got this song for you. You got to hear it. And he'd send him my songs. And, um, then he, um, he had a place across the street behind house of cash museum in Hendersonville. That sat on 16 acres and John Carter, man, I'd have been back. I'd be getting electrocuted right now if it wasn't for the cash family. And I, they, they gave me this, they gave me this house on 16 acres and uh, I lived out there for a while. They didn't like sign it over, but I mean, I right, paid 300, they stay there. Yeah. I started touring a lot more and uh, I started opening up shows for John and uh, wow. I, I, sang on, I sang on a Johnny cash record when I was 19 with the Carter family. I was sitting there, you know, in the studio and John was there and I was just trying to make conversations. Like, when are we going to write one? When are we going to go red? And he's like, well, how about no? And he grabbed me by my shoulders and walked me in the studio and June Carter and Anita Carter and all the Carter families there. And he kind of pushed him aside and put me in the middle and said, June, show him his part. And there I am singing. And I remember the engineer goes, somebody's singing a little flat. And I said, it's probably me. I'm scared shitless. And, uh, <laughs> And so, yeah, 1990, I moved to town. So 91, um, I'm oh, wow. staying, staying at John and June's place. I'm spending uh, Christmases in Jamaica with John. And, and me and John Carter are still tight. We're still like family. I love that family. And John Carter, if you're watching this, I love you, man. Um, so when it got time, I was the anti-Mary guy. I was, wasn't going to get married. Yes, you were not the married guy. See, I only know no. you from, from the Ian relief on. Yeah, Hurricane Ian, the Hertz, and I only know you and Jen from that moment on. So, yeah. like, I, I don't really know you. There's, you, know, you, you tell oh, me the there's, leg and, yeah. there's legendary stories about my ass in this town. I was, a, I was a train wreck, man. I had a, I had a good time. But anyway, oh, can so I, can I say? Wait, can I tell people? Uh, so I booked this thing. It's a, it's a cabin, right? It's really nice cabins. And you say to me one time, <laughs> that's an ugly. It's almost like discovering your past life through little things. I'll say, I'll say something like, yeah, I booked this cabin in, in, in Tennessee for D and I, and Ira will say something's like, oh man, that's, that's, that's right where I just sold my cabin. He goes, yeah, I just, we were on tour and I blacked out and I woke up. I'm like, what am I doing here? And my, my my bass player was in the next cabin. And he got up. He's like, "Hey man, we bought some cabins." I'm like, "What did we do last night?" Like, that didn't yeah. happen. And you're like, "Oh yeah, no, I have no clue. Yeah. I just know I bought cabins." I'm like, what? that was a three. That was a three hundred and five thousand dollar drunk right there. <laughs> that's a bad. Kid. That's, that's a bad. Some people are hitting the casino. You're like, "I'm buying cabins." I want a cabin, man. How many yeah. acres? I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you but at least you, you were a smart drunk investor. Yeah, that. well, you should have you should have heard that conversation between me and my business manager when I pulled had to call that one the next morning. You did what? <laughs> uh, I think it's a great investment. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, good. man. Oh, no, good. so, so now, uh, we're getting married. Yeah. We're going up to Jamaica to Johnny and June's old house in uh, Cinnamon Hill and get married. And I called John Carter and I said, man, I, I swore I'd never do this, but you're my brother and 
you're an ordained minister now. He was nice enough, man. Uh, when my father died, I, yeah. you know, I had to plan the whole thing. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to do a funeral. And John Carter just showed up out of the blue. Not, you know, he didn't call in advance. He brought a Bible and he's like, he got up in front of everybody and said, you know, I'm not a preacher, but my grandfather was. And, and I loved Ira's dad. And I want to say a few things. And he took over. And so mm. I was like, man, when I get married, if I ever do, I'm going to call you. And I did. And he's like, hell yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So we're going to do that. You're coming, right? I'll be there. I already booked it. I already hell booked yeah. my rooms. I got my flight. We're good to go. Hell yeah, man. I'm psyched. So let's go tie the knot. I'm excited for you. We, we'll, we'll, we'll talk when you get back. We'll talk when Aye. you get back. So the Aye. other thing, which now, if you've seen me live, um, and I mentioned a little bit on, uh, like the piece I did on Gutfell, for those of you that saw that, and it's kind of running around a little bit. Um, it's Jason, Justin Aldean, my po Jason Aldean. Jason. I guess? Okay. My apologies, Jason. So they played the clip and you know what I said, what I, what I thought. And, um, but I also, when it came to me, I knew I, I I've, I've got about 40 minutes of, me talking about hunting in different spider webs that are going. You haven't seen it yet, but the reason what the reason I want to talk to you about it is because people don't know Ira is the one that I finally went, okay, I'll go with you. And so this is my so <clears throat> when when things went down, this is what I tell people you could be mad or you you can debate guns all you want you just knock yourselves out uh you're not going to change anything right oh but how many kids well, people shouldn't have guns but all i know is i was one of many many during the lockdowns and what we saw on television i was one of the many that ran to the gun store going do you have any guns left and they all would be like, well, we got some, but no ammunition. I don't care. I'll find the ammunition. Get me a gun now. Right? So then that, that and, and people don't understand, that that's truth. And you could be against it or, or whatever. And then I was like, you know, if things go down, and people still think that way. If things go down, there's no way I'm going to survive. Everyone who thinks they can hunt, you're not, you're not. I didn't, so Ira's finally like, and I, and I don't think I could take out a hog. I've heard all the stories. Wow, well, we go, we shoot the hog, the machine gun. Da, 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 da. I'm like, oh my God. And you could judge it all you want, but country boy will survive. You better get yourself a country boy. So Ira finally is like, hey man, let's try turkey hunting. I'm like, okay. Now you knew I was a little... Did you understand like emotionally? Yeah, I knew, I knew totally. When I take people that never hunted before, I usually say, let's go turkey hunting because there's no emotional attachment to a turkey. I mean, they got a, they got a scrotum hanging from their face. I mean, you, you can't fall in love with that. <laughs> they look like a little alien, you know? It's like you, you pull the trigger and boom, and they, they're tasty, and you get, you, know, you get the hunt for your first time. So I called up my buddy uh, Michael Waddell from Bone Collector, who I hunt with all the time. And uh, I said, man, if you can schedule a, a hunt for me and my buddy, it'd be great. And he came down and we, we went out there and you, you smoked that bird. If it all but goes before, south, man, you know, you can eat. I, 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 at least a turkey. You it did was, it, man. I was proud I of it. you, man. That's thank you. It's awesome, man. It was yeah. good times. And I can't it, wait to see your stand up about it. Oh, you're going to, you're going to die. You're because it's all true stuff it, and it's a whole journey. It's literally like a two year journey that led to that turkey hunt and well you're welcome back anytime well i'm i'm yeah. hopped i'm ready to do it again man i'm ready to do it again and i what i really want to do is that other thing you were talking about like in the middle of the everglades where the gators are and all that and just oh, I can line that up. Your, at your buddy's place like just we can do middle it. nowhere dude we got it i really want to do that 30 minute I 30 really minute airboat that. ride from anything I'm, I'm, I, I real that, whew, 
I'm I'm you can, all in, man. You can hear a mouse piss on cotton from a hundred yards out there. There ain't nothing. Out there. <laughs> so let me ask something real quick um, before I let you go. You're you're performing and you've been doing shows. Do you have any shows coming up that people can yeah, go and yeah. check you out? Yeah. So September first in Gainesville, Georgia, at the Boot Barn Hall. You can go check me out there. I'll be doing songs. A lot, not a lot of people don't know. I've written songs for everybody from Rascal Flats to. Uh, Aaron Lewis, uh, Chris Young, uh, got you name it. I've had 50 songs on the radio. So I'll be telling all my Johnny Cash stories to my Mel Tillis stories and playing all the hits I've written and just do a big old behind the music thing. So it's dude, uh, I, I've, I've seen, I've seen you and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm just kind of rediscovering, um, like my old country music I used to listen to. And I've, I've been out of country for years and years. I went into rock and metal and all that. But when I, when I saw you between your storytelling and the songs you go into and your voice, like I, I didn't realize your voice was that good. And I was like, Oh my God, this guy, I could have sat and listened to you forever. So uh, maybe I'll take a ride up there September 1st. But anyway, for everyone Come else on. listening, um, is there a website? Uh, yeah, you can go to bootbarnhall.com, and then uh, I'll post it on my socials. You can go to Ira Dean Bass, B-A-S-S, on Instagram and check out it. I'll, I'll post it on there. But, man, we need you know, to do some stuff. We need to do some stuff together, like some hit, I got, uh, I got hits ideas. and giggles or some shit. I like that a lot. When, when, we, when we connect, you come back. I think uh, hits and giggles is really fun. I like that concept. And then we can... And as soon as I get into the studio, by the end of the month, there's there's room for a little jam. We can we can uh, we definitely should do something because I got ideas, and I know you got a lot of ideas. Hell yeah! And Ted Nugent told me to tell you, hey, I told him I was I told him I was doing this, and he's like, tell Brewer I said, hey. Except he went on <laughs> and on with a with a bunch of four letter words. So yeah, I went a lot of them. Went a lot. Good for yeah. him. All I, right, brother, I, be I, safe. Man, Brewer, I love you, man. Be good. I love you too, Ombre. I'll see you September 1st, if not before that. All right, amigo. Later. Ira Dean, everybody. Um, yeah, Ira is he's such a good human being. And just, I mean, just the whole that blew my mind when he started talking about, you know, just living with Johnny Kent. Just simple life. You forget it's just real life stuff. I, I, I don't know what the times we're living in. I just know that it, it, it's going to get crazier. And the only way, the only way I can see us helping, like doing better is to completely deprogram. We need to learn from and encourage the broadcasters of respect, understanding, and love. I know they're out there. How come we don't put them on the forefront? How come they they don't? But we'll 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 put all the false idols up there. Oh, your favorite sports star, your favorite politician, your favorite political group, your your favorite sexual group, your favorite. Uh, celebrity, all, all, everything else. That's basically meaningless at the core of your soul and energy and spirit. It's at the end of the day, it's meaning they're meaningless. You know, it started with, I, I saw that video of, uh, it was Alabama and a bunch of bananas where they wouldn't move their boat and they made a white black thing. I, I can see it's a white black thing, but at the same time, it's a moral, it's a moral thing. Cities, so these bananas were on a boat, right? And it was a little pot to, and then a big boat was coming. Big boats coming. Let's, we're not even going to use race. Let's just talk people. There's people on a little boat. And there's a big boat coming in. This is the big boat space. The big boat, this is the big boat space where it docks. 
And the loop boat ain't moving. It's not at stock. Well, let's say let's say someone said stay there for a couple minutes. Now respect. If I see the big boat trying to be like, oh shoot, let me get my boat out of the way. That would be the respectful thing to do. That would be the honorable thing to do. That'd be the good thing to do. The common sense thing, the courtesy. But no. The little boat people. I didn't hear the conversation. You can only see they're giving uh, not now. Now, a representative of the big boat people come and they go, hey, man, you got to move the boat. And the little boat people start giving them some attitude and lip. And really giving this person a hard time. This person, this is their job. They just, who knows what this person's life is, but they're working. They're trying to get by life, trying to feed whoever they got to feed. And they're literally just like, hey, man, you got to move this. And the little people, not only not listening, but they're, they're, they're fighting back to the point where, again, I don't know what was said and I don't think it matters. Matter of fact, I know it doesn't matter what was said. One of the bananas from the little boat literally runs and tackles the representative from the big boat tackles this human being and they start beating on him. Grown adults. We're not talking 14 year old, 13 year old, 12 kid. We're talking adults. Violently punching this man. Well, now the big boat people are watching this and there's other people watching this and knowing this is this is so such a disturbing uh, such a disturbing part of humanity and the big boat people went to help the big boat worker and then, then he started whooping ass on the little boat people. And so <laughs> it, it got, it got, it got kooky. It got crazy. But this is a, this is an example of what is wrong with you? And what is wrong with you? This is a deeper than a black white thing. This is this is a moral, moral, godly. We have no morals. We have no godly thoughts anymore. You choose violence, you can't talk about the violence that ensues. You lit a fire, then fire's gonna take off. If you if you choose to go. Oh, dude, I'm st I, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Oh, shoot. Okay, um, give me thirty seconds. Give me thirty. I am so sorry. We'll move this thing right now, and you move it. And let's say I had to slip for that. I'm like, well, I'm supposed to be parked there. Like, well, I don't know what happened, but I need this big boat in, and we can't we can't get it. Then I, as a human, would go. Okay. All right, well, can you find out where I can stay? I'll move so they can get in, and then maybe you can help me get in. Like, do you see how easy it is just to start moving with some respect and moral thought process? The reason I'm telling you this is because I know they're going to push the race card hard. They, they've been, that's their, that's their playbook. The broadcasters, who are the broadcasters? Who's funding? Who's allowing? Who's pushing? Who's reading the script? Who's writing the script? They want this because they're evil. Who's pushing the narrative? They are the ones that do not want us all to unite. 
and it is time to put a light on the cockroaches. We'll see you next week on the Bruniverse. Go enjoy life this week. Walk in the woods or something. Have a good one, Mike. Take we'll care, see you man. all next week. Later. If you'd like to check out this episode uncut and uncensored, head over to jimbrewer.com slash Patreon. Hey, this is Jim Brewer, and I got my own Patreon page, and hopefully you'll check it out. Live comedy concert streamed once a month. Weekly, you host your own podcast, and you interview me. Early access to the Bruniverse podcast every single week. And have bonus footage and bonus segments. I promise you I'm not going to let you down. Go check out my official Jim Brewer Patreon page, and I'll see you there. Anti-Mary guy. I was, wasn't was going to get married. Yeah, I didn't. See, I didn't know about this. I also know you have this whole other. Uh, hold on a second. You know how we saved a cat, right? Yeah. Yeah, well. Jim, Jim, look I at this. Look, what? look what I got in my see. lap. I got a. Oh, no. Wait, look. You got to get out of the studio, kid. Go ahead. Stay there yeah. and hang out. You tell me the story with Johnny Cash, and I have this thing scratching my leg. And I'm like, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> oh, my God. It's amazing. I swear. <laughs> oh, my God. And then it was, then I started panting it to get it. And you could, I was like, oh, my God. Please tell me you can't hear this thing purring. Because she went, <laughs> <laughs>